Uh, the technology area has exploded. Uh, the city of London has a shit congestion charge. You have a transponder in your car. If you're going downtown, it deducts money from your bank account. Singapore has a huge congestion charge. They charge a fortune to get a car license. And when you go downtown, it takes 300 bucks out of your bank account. Uh, and then, therefore, if you want to control the shredding companies, you simply hand and say to the shredding companies, why are you shredding and occupying our streets during the day? If you come downtown at night, you can shred. If you come down during the day, you can't. And, why, and, and, and the long-term part of this is the fact that you, you actually have a plan. So that when, when future buildings are built, your planning regime is amended to require shredding facilities to be on site, to require them to be in a loading dock. And, and so you have some control of those policies. Right now, nobody has control of these policies. The grease kept getting poured down the drain, and it starts accumulating on the pipes, and it clogs everything up. And the way to clear the drain is to, in fact, have a plan to do it, put the city on the right road, and then TTC policies will mean something because they will fit into a context that favors public transit. And there's so many sacred cows out there. For example, why can people not park or stop on a fire hydrant? Why not use the fire hydrants for taxi stands? What about the integration of public transit? Why, why shouldn't the why shouldn't Union Station have a real taxi stand inside the station where it used to be? Why shouldn't we allow some taxis, for example, selected spots within our, our transit stations to get them off the streets and make them convenient for the interchange? And those are the kinds of policies you need to develop on a comprehensive basis. Frankly, you, you just set aside $47 million, great, like the way you did it. You grab $2 million for research into how to relieve traffic congestion or road congestion for public transit vehicles. $2 million would go a long way in the CDC planning department to help them decide uh, what technologies will benefit public transit. And so my suggestion is uh, adopt Councillor Heise's motion, but try and get a more comprehensive program rolled in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Questions? Uh, Commissioner Heise, to speak? Thank you, Carl. So, Councillor Mosco, can I nominate you for councillor? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah. So I am. Um, I wanted to. Uh, I rem I'm reminded. I can't figure out why I'm so angry when I see delivery vehicles, taxis, um, shredded, staying for eight hours in front of my building, which they did this week as well. By the way, they're very afraid of this board and and me. Um, they're very fearful, but I, I'm i reminded of the movie Network that most of you are old enough to remember, which is Howard Beale says, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore, and until we get mad as hell, we're not going to change what's going on in our streets, and our streetcars are not going to work, and people, and we have made a, a decision as a society, we don't think the people who take surface transit are important enough for them to have a trip that's predictable. Because we will, we have allowed, we allow people to block intersections for a $40 fine. We allow shredded to spend eight hours in front of my building and disrupt the King Street streetcar service, inconvenience thousands of people, and we have to get more mad. Because until we do, it will not change. Now having gotten that out of my system, I like Councillor Moscow's resolution better than mine because it's an attempt at a holistic response to a problem that we seem institutionally incapable of resolving. And maybe trying to force the institutions to talk to each other about this idea might start that conversation. So firstly, I'd like to move Councillor Moscow's resolution. Um, pardon me, Mr. Moscow's resolution the former councillor for, for Dowsley. And the second thing I'd like to do is I'd like to withdraw the motion that I proposed last month, not because I don't believe in it. I still believe everything that's set forth there, but I had a very good conversation with Mr. Sandler, and he educated me a little. I like getting new stuff. And I thought it through, and I don't think it was productive. I think the ideas in it might be productive to bring to the attention of the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee. And I've got a shorter resolution that references the uh, 
study that was initiated by Councillor Stintz at City Council in October about main, maintaining traffic flow in the downtown area. So that report started in October, and I think we need to put a little fire into that study process and ask Public Works and Infrastructure Committee to get the Transportation Department to report to us about the progress they've made on the direction they received six months ago. And it's important enough that Public Works and Infrastructure should be advised, as should we, every three months about what's going on and are we getting a solution. And if we don't, we've got a reason to get mad and talk about it again. So I move the resolution that's up on the uh, board. I'd seek a seconder for that. I move the resolution, the resolution proposed by Mr. Mosco. And uh, I hope that I've uh, encouraged some of my, account, my commission members to get mad. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner DeBearmaker, you'd like to second it? Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll certainly support the motion. It's uh, very well written. So the author of the motion had done it at least once before, if not uh, thousands of times before. Um, and, and I agree on, on the times when I drive downtown, I, I see some areas where we get rid of traffic very effectively. It tends to be in the residential areas where it's uh, parking up till 7 a.m. And I see a long, not a long line, a line of tow trucks, three or four long, and they are zipping like bees to honey, and they're taking those cars away. And I think, why are they so efficient clearing the road? I really like this as a driver, because instead of having one lane of traffic, very soon I'll have two. And I sometimes suspect, well, those tow truck drivers probably make money off every time they lift a car and take it away. So it's organized, and there's a financial incentive for companies to very efficiently get rid of those people who break the law and slow us all down going to work. And I'm, I'm very happy. It's a, that's the way the city should work. When it's rush hour, the road should be for people getting from A to B. Then I drive around the corner, and I see a hostess potato chip truck just stopped in a lane of traffic with some guy at the back counting bags of potato chips, counting them twice, and wandering into the Max Milk store and dropping them off. And by then, I've probably driven by, and who knows when he comes out. I'll see the Briggs trucks. Uh, I do see shredder trucks sometimes, but I see a lot of delivery vehicles, and of course, I wonder why are these folks just being able to do this, inconveniencing thousands of people and not being penalized? I don't know why, but I do know it's not working, and I think this motion, uh, authored by uh, Mr. Moscow, uh, moved by uh, Mr. Heisey, may actually help us get to a, to a solution. I drove by Young and Dundas the other day in my, my car. And there was a backup. And I thought to myself, could the traffic congestion be caused by the thousand people going through that scramble intersection? There must have been a thousand people there. There was hardly enough room for people. And I thought, is this what's causing traffic congestion? A thousand people going through the intersection? But then I looked to my right and I said, no, it's not them. Because there's one guy picking up his girlfriend from Ryerson University in front of the Canadian Tire Store who's blocking every single car and every single single street car for five blocks to the west. Nobody can get by him because he's just stopped his car, he's put on his flashers, he's parked illegally, and there's nothing any of us can do to get past him. And that's what causes traffic congestion. Not the thousand people at the intersection going through Young and Dundas Square, but it's the one or two or sometimes even five individuals who've decided that they want their friend to go into Canadian Tire and buy something. And they'll just park on Dundas in the middle of rush hour while the rest of us get late for work or late going home from work because somebody has decided to pop into Canadian Tire or somebody's decided they really like their new friend and they're going to give them a ride from the university and none of us can actually get past them. So I do think it's time to increase the fines. The City of Toronto has started to do that. But I also think it's, it's time that we have these SWAT teams just go straight down Dundas, give the tow truck operators a financial reward so that they get rid of these folks and people can actually get to work on time. And that, and a fair increase next year, I think will be, make a lot of our transit riders very happy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, 
Any questions? Like, how did you know it was his girlfriend? <laughs> okay. Certain look. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Report number three.